A Chinese nuclear power plant needs to be shut down. Another disastrous meeting between the U.S. and China. And China meets with the Taliban. Then more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. If you're going to be doing stuff on the internet, like watching videos about Chinese cover-ups, you should be using a VPN to protect your identity. So you may remember back in June, the Taishan nuclear power plant in China had a wee bit of a problem. French power group EDF said on Monday it had been informed of a buildup of inert gases at its plant in China and had called for a meeting with its Chinese partner. CNN also reported that Framatome, the EDF unit which designed the reactor, had warned of an imminent radiological threat. But China said everything was fine. State-run China General Nuclear Power Group, the majority owner of the joint venture with EDF, said in a statement on its website on Sunday that operations at the nuclear power station met safety rules and the surrounding environment is safe. Yes, it met safety rules that the Chinese regime changed. China's nuclear regulator had raised the plant's radiation emission limits to avoid a shutdown. It's not a problem if you just change the definition of what is a problem. Well, we now have an update on the Taishan nuclear plant. The French co-owner says the problems are serious enough that the plant should be shut down. But even though they're a co-owner of the plant, it's the Chinese side that gets to make that call, which means it's not shutting down. That's fine. EDF says it's not an emergency situation. It's just a serious situation that is evolving. Like when a magic carp evolves into a Gyarados. It's perfectly harmless until it becomes a gigantic dragon or something like that. But nuclear power plants aren't the only concern. China is also radically expanding its nuclear missile capabilities. According to satellite images obtained by the Federation of American Scientists, China is building 110 new nuclear missile silos in Xinjiang, not to be confused with the 120 new missile silos discovered earlier this month. Those are different recently discovered missile silos. I don't want to be an alarmist here or anything. Now, we know Chinese state-run media always likes to criticize America's Cold War mentality. However, the Chinese missile silo program constitutes the most extensive silo construction since the U.S. and Soviet missile silo construction during the Cold War. You know what the Cold War mentality was? The U.S. doing everything in its power to stop a hostile communist regime from taking over the world. I think we could use a little more Cold War mentality. Then maybe we could have good James Bond movies again. A new report from the RAND Corporation has sort of a good news, bad news take on China's military development. So on the one hand, China's rapid military buildup has been almost entirely based on stealing from the West. That's bad. But China's reliance on theft of intellectual property for its weapon development has helped keep it competitive, but has pegged it several years behind the cutting edge. Yeah. They're only just getting to Cold War era nuclear buildup. But President Biden has a chilling new message about where all the cyber attacks from China may lead us. Well, if we end up in a war, a real shooting war, with a major power, it's going to be as a consequence of a cyber breach, of great consequence. A shooting war with China? Good to know. That way, I can follow the New York Times' advice to invest in China but without illusions. Sure, American officials say China is now America's most threatening adversary and engages in pervasive human rights violations. But it's also worth noting that since the reopening of China in the 1970s and 1980s, there has been a remarkable improvement in the quality of day-to-day -day life for hundreds of millions of people, according to an investment strategist. Maybe this article should have been called Invest in China, but keep your illusions like the illusion that the Chinese regime isn't committing genocide and killing people to sell their organs. 
Otherwise, you might have to stop justifying investing in China. And after the break, there's an even easier way for China to catch up with American military technology. Welcome back. China doesn't always have to hack the U.S. to steal military technology. It can just buy people off. I know, shocking, right? An electrical engineer from Los Angeles has been sentenced to five years in prison for selling missile technology to China. The guy was from Hollywood Hills. And that's a real box office bomb. The U.S. and China have held another high-level meeting this week, and it went about as well as the one in March. U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman met with China's Vice Foreign Minister She Feng. Then she met with Foreign Minister Wang Yi. It was here in the Chinese city Tianjin. And it got spicy. She said the U.S. was turning China into an imaginary enemy to reignite its own sense of national purpose. Right, the imaginary enemy that's building hundreds of nuclear missile silos. According to the State Department, Sherman raised concerns about human rights, including the crackdown in Hong Kong, the genocide in Xinjiang, and abuses in Tibet. And yes, the State Department is still calling it a genocide. Meanwhile, Wang demanded the U.S. not cross three bottom lines, Xinjiang, Tibet, and Hong Kong, claiming that the three issues had nothing to do with human rights or democracy. And in a way, the Chinese Communist Party is right. Those three regions no longer have anything to do with human rights or democracy. China also demanded the U.S. end sanctions on Chinese officials. That came right after China sanctioned U.S. officials. And Beijing thrusted long lists of demands at the Biden administration. It was what the State Department called a frank and open discussion. Sure sounds like it. So that might not have been the most successful meeting. Hopefully, Secretary of State Antony Blinken has better luck with a meeting he had this week with a representative of the Dalai Lama in India. I guess the U.S. is also trying its hand at troll face diplomacy. The Chinese regime, eager to show that there's no genocide in Xinjiang, gave AP journalists a tour of a detention center in the city of Urumqi. As one official told them, see, the BBC report said this was a re-education camp. It's not. It's a detention center. Uh, first of all, saying it's not a re-education camp, it's a detention center, does not make it better. See, it's not a camp where we're imprisoning and torturing people. It's a detention center where we're imprisoning and torturing people. Also, the AP reporters investigated and found out it was a re-education camp in 2018 that the authorities then turned into a detention center. So that tour kind of backfired. But some of the Chinese Communist Party's repression is going just swimmingly. The first person tried under Hong Kong's national security law has been found guilty of secessionism and terrorism. The trial was held in the high court with no jury under rules allowing this exception from Hong Kong's common law system. If state secrets need to be protected, foreign forces are involved, or if the personal safety of jurors needs to be protected. In other words, they can abolish trial by jury now whenever they want. With this conviction for secessionism and terrorism, it's clear Hong Kong has become just another Chinese city, only a little less Shanghai and a a little more Urumqi, just waiting for those re-education camps, sorry, detention centers. The Chinese Communist Party loathes terrorism, and they proved it by offering a warm welcome to the Taliban. As American forces and their NATO allies withdraw from Afghanistan, Chinese officials are meeting representatives of the Taliban, who they say will play a, quote, important role in Afghanistan's future. China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi met the nine-person delegation in the Chinese city of Tianjin. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Chao Li Tian. Wang Yi, Wang Yi pointed out that the Afghan Taliban is a pivotal military and political force in Afghanistan. It's expected to play an important role in peaceful reconciliation and reconstruction in Afghanistan. Because when I think of peaceful reconciliation, I think of the Taliban. Just like when I think of human rights, I think of China. And finally today, a wealthy Chinese pig farmer has been jailed for provoking trouble. 
Incidentally, he was also an outspoken supporter and friend of Chinese political dissidents. Sadly, this pig farmer will no longer be able to bring home the bacon. My advice is, if you're going to support Chinese political dissidents, at least hide your identity so the government can't spy on you. And the best way to do that is with a VPN, like Surfshark. When you go online, especially in China, you need to be using a VPN, like Surfshark, to protect your identity. Every time you write an online comment or send an email to your dissident friends, or visit a subversive website, governments and your internet service provider can see everything you do. And that's scary, especially if you're in a country that arrests people and puts them on secret trials without juries. So whenever you go online, especially if you ever use public Wi-Fi, you really should be using Surfshark to protect yourself. Plus, you can use one Surfshark account on an unlimited number of devices. Surfshark is also a cool company because they've been sponsoring China Uncensored for more than two years, supporting us even as YouTube censors and demonetizes us. So if you need a VPN, and trust me, you do, check out Surfshark. Go to surfshark.com slash uncensored and use the code uncensored to get their special deal that includes three extra months for free. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.